Hey guys, I'm Orthodon and we are back for Boruto episode 206. So, last time we had the uh, the characters find out that Naruto is still alive. They are using the arm and the abilities that Kawaki has in order to create a portal and just teleport straight to that chakra source. Um, as I talked about in the last video, I did see, like, one frame of the, like, next time stuff, and it did show, uh, Boro there with his arm, like, around the thing that sealed away Naruto, so I have a feeling we might have a fight on our hands against Boro here soon. Um, Koji had to defend himself, uh, from Boro's suspicion, seemingly did it for now but i don't know if boro's really buying it if he's just letting it go for now or if koji really convinced him i'm never sure in anime but uh and then we have jigen who needs 10 days before his tank is full again in order to uh in order to fight seemingly and sasuke is unconscious and they plan on taking boruto as well so yeah i'm excited to get into more I was warned that I think this is the episode that has the new opening, so I'll be looking out for that, and I'm going to try not to watch it, because I've heard it is crazy spoilers, so yeah, I'm I'm going to do my best not to watch it, and we will go from there. So let's get started, shall we? Alrighty, we're going to start here in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, now. <laughs> By running away first. No recap either, or barely any. This is all new right away. Hype. I want to learn more about these other dimensions. <laughs> I like how you didn't recognize him at first. Nope. In some ways... Interesting. Oh shit, that's a new opening. Just listen to the music, not watching. I hope you guys enjoy the top of my head. I could just minimize the episode. My peripheral vision is accidentally seeing a not real. I couldn't make out anything. I'm looking at my other monitor to look how ridiculous I look. It's not a very hype song, is it? All right, that part's a little more hype. It's a good, I, I, I like the song, it's not bad. How many episodes am I gonna have to do this? <laughs> like, 25 episodes. I think it's every like 20 something episodes, okay. All right, we're good. What, the new Team 7? How many episodes have been titled that? I feel like we've heard that a lot in this show. Well, between the old show and this one, like new Team 7. All right.
he's going to be overconfident and say he's in here. Could he drain the magic using karma to, like, drain the seal's effects? I don't know. Yep. She's going to straight up tell him. Well, they know he's alive because of the arm. Jeez. Well. He's not worried about them breaking it. <laughs> he tries to open it by hand. God damn it. Only Jigen can. Hmm. Send him an SOS. Naruto. He probably can't. Just like flash the chakra in Morse code. He's gone! Underground? That sounded like Earth rumbling. Alright, so... He does some Earth style, seemingly. Acid. Okay, so he can't harm that. You gonna try to suck it all up? Jesus. Okay. Yeah, not even a scratch. He's so worried. Nice, Borto. <laughs> there's a fairy tale character that was like a bigger guy like kind of like Boro that uses acid to attack Oh shit! What? Okay, well he has an indestructible body, so I'm not really worried yet. Well, not that I'd be worried anyway if Boro got taken down. Yeah, he was heals. Not fully, though? Interesting. He still has, like, a indent, though. Was it like a substitution? Oh shit! What happened? Why? He was able to absorb illnesses before. Can he release illnesses?
Did he turn himself into mist? Okay, no. I don't know why. All right, Mitsuki, making his move. Blew some of it away. Get back! Careful! His body isn't just entirely human, though, so... Although neither is Kawaki's. I don't know. He knows a lot. Okay, see so it does water too. Ooh. Nice. Can't imagine that will do much. Serata? Maybe get a punch in? Maybe not. Or not. Jesus Christ! Oh! You got a bite in, some poison. Okay. He can just heal it. He has to do the hand signs to heal then, maybe? So if you cut off his arms, could he not heal, <laughs> maybe? I don't remember seeing him do any hand signs when he got cut in half by that one guy, though. Did he? Oh, Serana's turn. I love how she just sat back and watched. I wrote that down, but I'm, I'll talk more about that. Be more creepy, why don't you borrow? It's the way he said that. You come back to me, won't you? You're in no shape to fight, sir. Is it like a part of him? So it's not chakra then? If he can heal himself, can he disintegrate parts of himself or something? Is that what he's doing? Or maybe he's absorbed illnesses from other places, and now he's, like, releasing them. So it's not chakra-based. Like, if I just, like, took cancer out of someone, and then just, like, dispersed it into the air kind of thing. Similar, in a way. Right. Poisoning your friends.
Okay. Makes sense. That's what I was thinking. Was he able to, like, make an antidote that easily? Okay. I like this background track. It's not the first time we've heard it, but... Captain Serata, new team seven. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she clearly can figure things out naturally because of her Sharingan and stuff like that. So it makes sense. She makes smart decisions. <laughs> nice. All right, let's see the counter attack. Oh, badass. We got a surprise for you, buddy. And then heal them and make you think, make them think that uh, you're a hero and follow you. Yep, this is where they're gonna reveal it, right? Yep, and this is how he gets his followers. Okay, I like thought of this back in that episode. I was like, is he infecting these people and then curing them in order to get his followers? Uh, this guy. What a crazy fuck. Okay, here we go. Nice. Hmm. All right. We didn't get to hear the plan, so it might work. I don't know.
I'm worried, like, he does have speed and he just hasn't shown it yet. That was creepy. But kind of cool. Yeah, not as slow as you thought there. Circling her in. Can you burn it? Viruses don't like, like, massive heat. And, of course, he's going to know that, yeah. Oh, Serata. Hopefully the friends come in, maybe? Damn it. Maybe this is the part of the trick. Mitsuki already gave her the antibodies, maybe? Oh, did maybe she didn't try to weave a sign? Maybe she injected herself. Maybe now she did it. I don't know. Something's happening though. I imagine the other three wouldn't just sit there and watch this. Yes. Oh. Oh yes, fireball to the face. Ha ha ha! Get fucked, bitch. Yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> He's gonna do the hand movement to heal or whatever, maybe. Oh, there's a Rasen got in his face. Enhancing it through that shit, whatever that is. All right. A big enough attack that maybe he can't heal through it? Maybe? He did get his hand sign off, though. I like how he still has the snake bites on his arm. I like that. Oh, uh, no, they declared win. Yeah, it's clearly not over. Jesus Christ, he, that's why the smoke kept covering it. Holy shit. <laughs> His whole top half was off. How? That's crazy. What is he? There's got to be a limit. And then they end it, right? Alright, I wasn't told that I can't watch the outro. Interesting. Hopefully it's okay that I watch the outro. Interesting that we saw the, the fourth Hokage looking at the village with the old amount of faces. Interesting. Hmm. Why? Intriguing. Cool. Alrighty, guys, that is it for episode 206. So, that end credit was interesting. I want to talk about that first just because, like, it might not mean anything. So, I just want to get it out of the way and off my mind. Um, why did we see the fourth Hokage and then, like, 
Naruto vandalizing the the faces as a kid and stuff like that. Like, sometimes the outros don't really mean anything, you know? Like, like the last one was just Kawaki and Boruto, Sarada and Mitsuki all just chilling in, in Boruto's house, you know? Um... And, like, it's not stuff we ever really saw, but I wonder if that's gonna have anything to do with anything, you know? Like, are we gonna somehow, like, delve into the past of Naruto again kind of thing? Or was it just just fun animation? Obviously, don't answer these questions. I don't want to know. I want to wait for the story to tell me or whatever, you know? And if we get all the way to the next ending and we don't see anything like this, then... You know, I'll know that it's just fluff and fun, but I just thought that was really interesting that they decided to to show that for this outro. But anyway, um, yeah, so we had this whole episode was dedicated to fighting Boro, and as I suspected when we were introduced to him while when he was saving those uh, villagers, he cultivates this virus within his body, he disperses it to get villagers sick, when they're at their, you know, most desperate, he comes in, heals them, and they worship him for it, and that's how he built his cult. Makes sense. That's pretty much what I assumed when I saw him with all his followers, and obviously I already knew at this moment that the Kara was a bad guy organization and everything, so it just makes sense that he would be the one spreading it and then healing people it. I feel like I've seen that kind of thing before, where people have, like, spread a disease and then save people from that disease to to pretend to be the heroes, you know? So, that's interesting, though. Um, he can heal from so much damage. I was actually... It's interesting because I I noticed throughout they, they had Serata put the fire on his upper body throughout the whole Rasengan, so we didn't get to see the effects of it. I was a little disappointed with that. I know this show needs to do some censoring. I know that sometimes it's a little bit more kid-ish in some ways. I felt like that was... I, I guess I'm still curious. Let me know, guys. How crazy was that in the manga? Because I know mangas tend to not hold back as much. I'm not sure about, like, Shonen Jump ones like this. Um, but, like... I guess I just don't... I don't even know if Shonen Jump is the right term, by the way. I might have just said that wrong. But either way, I know that sometimes manga is a lot more, like, uncensored and everything, and they go a lot more brutal than animation can do because of, like, you know, this is played on TV in Japan, I'm pretty sure. So they need to keep their ratings at, a, at whatever... I'm guessing it works similar to our TV where they can't show certain things and, and stuff like that, so... Um, but yeah, I'm curious in the manga, was that a lot more brutal to see than what we saw? Because I was slightly disappointed, I will say, with the fact that they covered him with fire, and then he did his Rasengan, and it was just like he was just shoving his Rasengan in the fire, and it, like, I couldn't tell what was happening. I couldn't tell if it was hurting him or what it was doing. It was just kind of there. And then it got bigger, and then we just saw him laying on the ground with, like, smoke going over the top half, blocking it. But then, you know, I can imagine the smoke was there as, like, a... Like, that could have been in the manga as well, and just, like, as a way to anticipate the hype, you know, of, like, oh, what did it do? What did it do? You know, how much damage did it do? Unfortunately, they already built up the idea that this guy can heal from being, like, chopped in half by that other dude so in a way i wasn't really worried you know like if this was the reveal that he was able to do this i would have been like holy like i feel like i, I was still surprised that he healed from this much because i can kind of understand being cut in half and like healing from that because he didn't like completely split open it would have been similar if he actually like if the two halves folded over and then they just kind of like you know back together but he kind of got, like, cut and then healed from it, you know? You could just assume that he just healed from it, like, immediately. And it didn't hinder him too much. But, like, this, his whole top was blown off and it, like, fabricated it out of nothing, you know? Honestly, 
whatever Boro's ability is here, it kind of seems like exactly what uh, Victor wanted, right? Didn't he want, like, immortality and he wanted to, like, restore his, like, missing leg and stuff like that? Although he did have... Didn't Victor have an ability like that, too? Didn't Victor lose an arm and just kind of, like, regenerated it back? So it's actually kind of a similar ability that Victor had. I guess Victor just wanted to live forever, I think. I think he was, like, dying and just wanted to live... Um, I don't know if it was necessarily to get his limbs back that he was missing or what, but because he did have like a super regeneration ability, so that's right. So it is similar to to that. So maybe, maybe, however, Jigen came across these people, maybe he can give them this gift of regeneration or something, and and gave it to both Victor and this guy, or maybe it's just something different that this guy has, you know, but. I'm wondering how you beat it. Like, is it chakra based? Can you, if you keep doing that, will he eventually run out of chakra and not, I mean, he does do a hand sign before he seemingly heals, I think. Right. So maybe, maybe there is something to that, you know, maybe you can, um, maybe you can just dry up his chakra with, you know, multiple attacks and everything. I don't know. I don't know how you beat him. But I'm sure they will find a way. But, uh... Although I don't know if they'll find it here. Maybe they'll just have to run or something. Like, I don't know if this is going to be the end of Boro or not. I'd like to see us start beating some of these guys. Because I feel like we now had a fight with Jigen. And he got away. We've had a fight with Delta. She got away. It'd be nice if we actually start, like, beating some of these guys. You know? But... I can understand if they're just trying to give us, like, a taste of what all these characters can do, and then maybe we'll see them all come back in, in one big attack, you know? And we'll have the, the Leaf Village side with some intel. If, like, if they get away from this, you know, maybe Sasuke will wake up and we'll have some intel on what Jigen can do. And then Sarada and the rest of them will have some intel on what Boro can do. And then Naruto probably already gave some intel on what Delta can do. You know, and we'll have, like, a decent enough idea. And we saw, I guess our characters saw a little bit of what Koji can do, briefly. Not uh, not a whole ton, but that's most people except for, like, Code. And I'm, I'm guessing that, um... Shit, now I can't think of his name. Like, the, the guy that does maintenance on all of them. I don't know why I can't think of his name right now. It's It's just... Spacing out. Did I write it down? Wait, Amado. I just saw it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he fights or not. I assume he doesn't. I imagine he stays in the lab and just maintains these people. I guess it's possible that he fights, you know? Um, I'm trying to think. Is there anyone else? Code, Delta, Boro, Jigen, Koji. Is it just five of them? Other than Amado? I mean, it used to be Victor and Deepa, too, but they're no longer around. I think that's it. But yeah. Um, so, except for Code, we know most of what, what they do. So, like, you know, if the Leaf Village, like, amassed all their intel, Sasuke did wake up, and, and we learn all that and, and everything, and these guys make it back. You know, assuming they don't beat Boro here, you know, then they could have all this intel and cultivate it. And then there could be one big attack, kind of like in the old opening. Although we've moved on from that old opening, so that might never happen. You know, what we saw there might never be. You know, that that might have just been like, here's some cool stuff, we'll throw it in an opening, you know. It still could happen, but who knows. Um, I didn't watch this new opening. I, I kept my eyes off it entirely, so... Don't know anything about that. Um, whatever spoilers are there in that. <laughs> I don't know why they do that. Why don't they just wait until... I mean, I guess it's supposed to hype people up. It's supposed to be like, oh, I can't wait to get to that part. You know, I want to keep watching until I get to see that, you know. But I prefer to have no idea what's going on. So that way when I see it, I'm not like, ah, oh, yes, the thing from the opening. I can be like, holy shit, what is this? You know, kind of thing. But... I understand it's like a, a different culture and even some Western stuff does it sometimes. So, but, uh, but yeah, anyway, 
what else do I have here? Um, Mitsuki was able to, like, nullify the effect. So I guess just maybe because his body is synthetic in a way that he's has some immunities to different viruses. And I guess he's able to distribute those immun immunities. Um interesting i didn't know he could do that i'm trying to i was trying to think if there was another time where we've had our characters get hit by like a non-chakra based like illness and that he could have just been like oh here i can fix it you know um but i guess i can't really think of an instance of that so anyway interesting um i like how mitsuki made like the decision to push forward on like, making Serata the captain, and I like that it came from Mitsuki, because it makes sense that Boruto has a little bit too much pride to bring up that idea. We even saw him dispute it briefly, like, why her, you know? And then Kawaki is obviously too new. He doesn't, he probably doesn't even know about the idea of, like, a, a three-man squad and then having a captain with that three-man squad, you know? So, like, it wouldn't really make much sense for him to be like, oh, we need a captain kind of thing, you know? So really that, that leaves Mitsuki, but I like, I had someone else mention it in a comment before about how like Mitsuki's really starting to make his own decisions. And I really like that his character is developing in that way. I do have to agree with that person. I've been thinking about it ever since that comment because like earlier in the show, Mitsuki was all about, and like, for me, it's happened so slowly and, like, progressively where, like, you know, he used to just follow everything Boruto does blindly. He he usually would never bring up his own ideas. He would just follow whatever Boruto does, you know, and agree with whatever Boruto does. But I like that he's starting to make his own decisions, even if it's not in line with what Boruto exactly wants, you know? Um, a lot of the times it's for the good of Boruto, you know, but... Boruto might not agree but anyway I just thought that was really cool and ever since someone mentioned that like like I said I guess I just didn't think much of it because it happens so naturally and that's like that's the best way you can do it like I hate when a character just suddenly changes all like when it's just like one extreme to another but we've just had it over the course of these 206 episodes since we met him you know he's just gradually evolved into you know, having his own personality, his own choices, you know, thinking on his own and everything. And, and that's really cool. So I wanted to point that out when I saw Mitsuki, you know, bringing up the idea that Serata becomes the, the captain and stuff like that. Um, I also really liked that Serata was just up there watching with her uh, Sharingan. I feel like that's something that we never really got too much of. We got it a little bit with Kakashi but we never really got it from Sasuke because a lot of the time, or I guess, like, he ended up leaving us pretty, not early on, but, like, before he really started using his Sharingan a lot, he left the group. So I really like having a character who has the Sharingan, who is with our group, who doesn't get, like, as worn out as, like, Kakashi did. Because Kakashi didn't have, like, the the stamina for it because he wasn't actually a Uchiha and everything. So he'd get worn out whenever he'd use it. So he tried not to use it whenever he can. But Serato just whips that thing out, uses it, and I love it because she's just up there watching everything he does, analyzing it and figuring out how it works. Granted, it was kind of a combination of Mitsuki and Serato that figured it out, you know? But I like that she's able to, you know, she's done it before, and I just really appreciate that she just stays back, keeps a calm head, thinks about everything that's going on, analyzes the movements of the enemy, and then she can work up a plan to to counter it and everything. Thought it was awesome. I love that so much. I want more of it. It's great. And then, you know, just having Boruto and, in this instance, Kawaki being one of the ones that just jumps in. Sometimes it's Mitsuki as well, but before Kawaki was here, where they just kind of bait out the enemy attacks for Serata to see them. It's a really cool combination. And then she does kick some ass when she goes in, too. Like, I, I love whenever she punches. It's great. But, uh... But, yeah. And, uh... They mentioned that, in some ways... Uh, Boro is worse than Jigen, 
Um, I wonder if that's just relating to the making people sick and then curing them to make them worship him. I wonder if that's just regarding that, or if there's, like, even worse things he's done. I imagine it's that, but I guess we'll find out if I'm if I'm wrong on that, so. Interesting. Um, it's actually really crazy that Kawaki, the one who has been taken from his home, not that his home life was very good in the first place, beaten by Jigen, hates this man like so much still is able to say like oh you know this guy might be worse than him that's actually pretty crazy if you think about it i didn't really like think about that coming from kawaki but that's pretty nuts because you'd think like there couldn't be anyone in this world that kawaki can hate more than jigen because of what jigen's put him through but you know kawaki can still see that you know this guy just might be worse it's, it's pretty crazy, and it really says something about Boro <laughs> that he said that. But, uh... And then we also have, uh... Jigen's the only one that can unseal that, so I wonder if that's true. Will will it really come down to, like, needing Jigen to unseal it somehow, or will we find a workaround? Because, like, technically that sealing is a jutsu, and anything that's chakra-based he said he can absorb, they mentioned it here... So could he absorb the seal from that? But they also said don't do it lightly, be careful, because, you know, who knows what will happen to the contents. So I guess you could kill Naruto if you try to suck the chakra out, and maybe something happens and and he's stuck there forever or something, I don't know. Um, or it just kills him. But I also love how worried Kawaki was. It's a small detail, but like... It's it's Boruto's father in that thing, yet Kawaki is the one that sucks up the acid and just runs to the the container and, like, checks it. And he's like, oh, okay. It, it's, it's okay. It's okay. It, it was really interesting that, that he was the one that did that and Boruto didn't as well, you know? Granted, Boruto might understand that, like, something... Boruto has a better idea of chakra, whereas Kawaki doesn't, you know, and maybe that's the difference. Boruto probably understands that a seal this strong that's able to seal the Hokage and can only be broken by Jigen isn't going to break by a measly acid jutsu, you know? Um, so I like... I like that I thought of that, to be honest, because that just makes it even better, thinking about, like, Kawaki not knowing anything about Chakra, and just being like, oh, this acidic shit, you know, and and goes after, and, like, and, and is really worried. But I also just like that he was so worried in the first place, because it's, you know, the, the development on Kawaki has just been amazing. And, like, with this much development, I think, and how good Kawaki is at this moment, I think it lends the credence... To my theory that during in the first episode we see Kawaki walking up behind Boruto after the seemingly time skip because Boruto looks older um and it's he seems antagonistic right he seems like the bad guy like they like they fight or they're about to fight I feel like I remember that implication it's been a long time since I've seen episode one um but I feel like there is that that implication there um, and I think that leads even more to the credence that that is, you know, Ishiki or Jigen or whatever inside Kawaki at that moment, not actual Kawaki, because I just, I don't know if there is any way that they could make me happy with the idea of our current Kawaki just turning bad, you know? I feel like he's too good-hearted of a person and we've had too much development and I would just hate that. But I can definitely see it if Jigen takes over his body and is controlling him. So I think, you know, seeing all of this development with Kawaki has really enhanced my theory that in that first episode, that's just, um, you know, Jigen possessing Kawaki. So interesting stuff. Oh, man, I I'm loving this arc and, and everything that's been going on. It's It's been nuts. And, and the crazy thing is, is this is just like, I guess... 
I guess it did end up being an Otutsuki. I was gonna say, like, this is just, like, separate from the Otutsuki storyline, but it is melding into the Otutsuki storyline. This is leading back to the guy that came here with Kaguya and all that, so it, it does have something to do with that. But I really want to, like, every time they go into this other dimension and stuff like that, I really just want to learn more, honestly, about the Otutsuki. Like, I hope, I hope before Boruto is over, we have, like, a moment where we actually, like, go to the Otutsuki homeworld and, like, learn more about their culture and their people and stuff like that, like... It's crazy, they're like these otherworldly beings that are from, like, another dimension or another planet or something. I still don't even quite understand. I think it's another dimension. But, like, I want to know more about their world and, like, who are they? Like, how did they get started? Are they, like, are we going to find out they're, like, humans from Earth that, like, went to this other dimension and shit like that or or what but i don't know i don't think that would make much sense i think it would make more sense if they're just aliens in some way but yeah i hope that eventually we get into that because that shit would just be so awesome to learn about but like we get little hints and everything like we know they have branch families you know like uh urashiki i believe his name was um was like a was like a branch family member who wasn't like as high up he was kind of like just he wasn't able to do as much as the you know the big the big names like momoshiki and stuff like that could do but uh but yeah so we know they have like branch families they have like a hierarchy and everything but they also are are the otutsuki their family oh excuse me like i don't know why i'm getting into this right now we're so far from any of these answers but I'm curious if, like, the Otutsuki are just some of the people in their homeworld, or is it their entire homeworld are Otutskis? Like, is that their word for, like, human? But it seems to be their last name. So are they, like, the Huga, where the Huga have, like, the main family and then the branch families, but then there's, you know, everyone else in the world that's separate from that? Do they have a whole world of, like, other people, or... Are they the only ones left? Did they, like, harvest their own world for a chakra fruit, and now they're literally the only family left? I don't know. Really interesting stuff. I'm super curious. I really hope we do learn more about that, because, like, I feel like they've, you know, built up this, like, people from another dimension and, and stuff like that. And even back with Kaguya, learning that she just, like, came here and, like, started doing shit on this planet... Like, back then I was interested, and now I'm just even more as we're getting, like, little bits of info. So, maybe we'll learn more someday. But anyways, guys, that's going to be it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed. Check out my Patreon if you want to see more from me. You can see a couple episodes ahead of my Early Access tier. My Patreon exclusive tier has all kinds of content that isn't even released to YouTube yet. So, check all that out if you're interested. And I will see you guys in my future reactions. Bye-bye.